I think it's important not to try and be too flowery with your he said, she said, he said, she said, it's just fine. Um, and again, that kind of a good way to break up the dialogue is to bring in what the person, what the other person thinks or who's saying what or who's reacting to what. That's kind of, that's kind of a good way of A, breaking up the dialogue and B, reminding the reader who is talking. Um, and I think don't be too flowery with your, she said in a, sh in a shocked voice, wide eyed, you know, just keep it kind of simple and straightforward. I love writing dialogue and it's probably my favorite, my favorite part of every book is the dialogue. I think when, when I'm writing dialogue, I very much, I'm in the conversation and I am both people. That's the beauty as well of writing. What I've found is it has forced me to look at two sides to every story because obviously when a character's having a conversation, they will have different opinions on something. So for me, dialogue is very much, you have to literally put on the character's clothes and say what they would say, then take off there, put on the other character's clothes. So you have to be very much in your character. Um, I quite like snappy dialogue because I think people do talk like that. Um, they don't tend to talk in kind of big, chunky dialogue. And also for a book, people can tend to go off on tangents in real life. That's not, that's not gonna work in your novel. It's gonna put your reader to sleep. So you have to be aware of that. So I would keep dialogue short, keep it snappy, and very much, you have to have the voice in your head. What you what you want to start with, I think, is 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 voice. Is is what what you know. If there's a sense of an accent, a sense of rhythm, it's great to tell a story through dialogue. It's entertaining. Um, it assists the believability of a story. I mean, I know we talk about this this expression, show not tell, which to my mind is an import from screenwriting technique. It's not you know in a novel you can tell as well. That's the whole point in free and direct speech, using the, the character's thoughts, getting inside a character's head to let us know what they're thinking as well. Um, I think the important thing is it's not a rule, it's a, it's a guideline. If, if they, for instance, speak in dialect, you'll have to make a decision regarding whether you're going to write it in dialect. Train spotting. Are you going to. Train spotting is written in phonetic representation of um, demotic speech amongst drug takers in Edinburgh. Are you going to write like that, which means that for the first 30 or 40 pages, a reader has to learn how to decode um, this speech, but then once they get it, they can sail through? Yeah. Or are you going to write in, in sort of in plain English mm -hmm. and simply retain the rhythms of the language, which will give you the same sense, but won't trouble you because you won't have these sort of, you know, phonetically represented sounds that you don't understand. For me, dialogue is just a joy. I think it's great because I find the way people speak really interesting. So I think I probably listen a lot to be, the way people speak and the way they express themselves. So for me, uh, I really love dialogue. And in fact, you know, I have been told by my editors that I need to work, work uh, harder on description and descriptive passages.